I'm Dr. Claire Jansen Nodell of the Mayo Clinic Rochester Internal Medicine Residency Program. Today I will be discussing our article titled Making Dysphagia Easier to Swallow, a Review for the Practicing Clinician, which will appear in an upcoming issue of Mayo Clinic Proceedings. I will begin with some background information. One in every 17 people will struggle with difficulty swallowing at some point in their lives. Dysphagia increases in frequency with age, affecting about 10% of adults over 65 years of age, and about 50% of the institutionalized elderly population. In this article, we summarize the key features of the history and physical examination that will guide investigation and treatment for dysphagia. This evaluation begins with a careful history to guide a cost-effective workup. The approach to the clinical history is broken down into a series of questions which help narrow the differential diagnosis. Before exploring these questions, it is important to clarify with the patient what is meant by dysphagia. Dysphagia needs to be distinguished from globus sensation or a feeling of a lump in the throat that can be present during eating or fasting, and odynophagia or pain with swallowing. After the true nature of the issue is clarified as dysphagia, we recommend proceeding with the following five questions. What happens when you try to swallow? Do you have any trouble chewing your food? Do you have difficulty swallowing solids, liquids, or both? What is the symptom duration and frequency? What are the associated symptoms? Next, we turn to the physical examination, which should involve an evaluation of the oral cavity, lymph nodes, neurological system, and skin. We then proceed to testing. In cases of oropharyngeal dysphagia, the gold standard test is the video fluoroscopic swallow study, or modified barium swallow. This test can also be useful as a first step for patients on dual antiplatelet therapy or chronic anticoagulation. In cases of esophageal dysphagia, the most helpful test is the esophagogastroduodenoscopy, or EGD. If an EGD shows no obvious pathology, a barium contrast study may help clinicians identify structural abnormalities. If a motility disorder is suspected, based on endoscopy or barium studies, high-resolution esophageal manometry is indicated. Finally, we proceed to management. A speech pathologist can guide a patient through compensatory interventions in the management of oropharyngeal dysphagia. For esophageal dysphagia, treatment should target the underlying etiology. An upper endoscopy can often lead to a therapeutic intervention as previously mentioned. It could also lead to a specific diagnosis, such as eosinophilic esophagitis. Patients with motility disorders, such as achalasia, require multidisciplinary care, including gastroenterology and thoracic surgery to determine the best treatment approach. In summary, dysphagia and its workup can often appear complex and time intensive as there are numerous associated conditions. As such, a methodical evaluation can ease diagnosis and treatment. Following these steps in this evaluation should help narrow the differential diagnosis and define the type of dysphagia involved in order to further direct testing. Thank you for listening to my presentation. We hope you find our article on dysphagia to be useful. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter.
More information about health care at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.